I'm about to trespass. I'm gonna go and have a look at the fort. And and my fellow trespasser. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> you're just gonna drop me and not go ashore. Yeah. The 1860s. Palmerston was in power. The French were threatening to invade us yet again. This resulted in a massive boom in the business of constructing coastal gun batteries and lots of good money for the arms manufacturers. The Palmerston Forts were the biggest peacetime military investment in history. They were all round the coast. From the Bristol Channel, Flatholm, Plymouth of course got lots of them. Even little places like Dartmouth got new gun batteries. The Solent, New Haven, and several big batteries on and around the Thames. The Chatham Approaches got two of the best money could buy on the islands of Darnit and Who. The first for me to try was Who. It's proving a bit hard to get to because there's a sort of ha ha here. So I've no idea how to get to it. I'm going to go on round a bit. Funny, it's funny because. You know, on the land, if there was somewhere like this, there'd be paths to it. But because this is an island and nobody ever comes on here, there are no real paths. So I'm just trying to find my way. Oh, this is an easy bit. Here we are. It's much, so much bigger and more massive when you're close up to it. I suppose it must have had some sort of drawbridge thing, although this looks like a slope up to it. Here we are. Slope up here. Wow! So that's how you get in. Oh! found some sort of path down to it. I have no idea how deep this water is. Wow! Someone's put a to go in because I can't see how deep it is. The trouble is the tide is coming up. Don't want to drop the camera. It's gonna go over the top of my boots. Fuck it. Any way you can get to the place is at high tide. Any way you can get into it is at low tide. Through this bottom gateway. So I can't get in. It's a shame. The islands are mostly mud, sadly, so the forts started sinking before the scaffolding had come down, hence the flooding. It's just as well I decided to not go through that passageway. Between the doors was a pit, roughly filled in. The bottom part of the fort was accommodation for the garrison of a hundred men, plus storage rooms for the ammunition. I presume the men smoked outside. The pictures come from the internet. Links to follow. Two tides later I had a go at getting into the other fort, the one on Darnit. This one is sinking even faster than who. From Google Earth you can see the old sea defences, thousands of wooden piles driven into the mud in an utterly futile attempt at stemming erosion. The sea always but always wins, it has time on its side. Some old concrete barges have been haphazardly sunk to protect the site from the prevailing westerlies.
And I'm just going to drift in here in the hope that there's nothing for me to hit. You can see a stick there, but... The authorities, whoever they are, have decided the best thing to do is to let the sea claim the lower floor completely and they've dug a channel to allow it into the basement and moat. I've no idea why they should think doing such a thing was sensible. The given reason is to protect it from vandals, which doesn't make any sense to me either. But I'm not an authority on anything at all. Right, this is assault on the fort too. Um, I brought the boat ashore and then uh, jumped out and needless to say got a welly full however I am ashore and uh, now let's go and have a look at this fort obviously the birds are a bit upset it's the same thing again actually, it's um, much more overgrown than it looks. But I assume that I can get around the back somehow. Hmm. Even bigger moat here. Oh man. Well. Well. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, I'm obviously not the first person to go along here. Look, it kind of, not much of a path, but it does at least go through the bushes. Other people have been through here. And, Jesus, this is the way in. Must be mad. I did it. Wow. Sorry, birds. I'm really sorry, birds. At the time, Europe was involved in a cripplingly expensive arms race. Ironclad steam powered battleships had started to appear, and lobbing cannonballs in their general direction no longer cut the mustard. They just bounced off. But if you make the shells pointy at one end, inscribe a spiral groove down the inside of the barrel of the cannons, then the shells spin as they fly, making them much more accurate and more or less armour piercing. But the guns are hideously expensive and a right bugger to manage. The ammunition had to be more or less screwed into the barrel. Even a good crew could only deliver a shell every two minutes. The planned second tier of guns was abandoned. The Medway Forts project came in three years late, hideously over budget and horribly under spec. It's hard to imagine a military project doing such a thing today. Oh yes. Oh yes. Wow, really dangerous.